Deep in the mountains of Greece, the country's most wanted man has been on the run for over a decade. He's a bank robber. We hear a barrage of shots. A kidnapper. But to many Greeks, he's a hero. His name is Vasilis Paliokostas, and we're on the trail of the man behind the myth. A modern-day Robin Hood who steals from the rich and gives to the poor. I'm Miles Gray. Listen to The Good Thief on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Bachelor Happy Hour, the one and only official Bachelor Nation podcast, is back. Go behind the scenes with your hosts, Bachelor in Paradise Season 7 newlyweds, Joe Amabile and Serena Pitt, for real stories about what happens in Bachelor Mansion. Here on Bachelor Happy Hour, we'll be putting all the guys in the hot seat. We'll have exclusive interviews. We'll be the first to talk to the men. We're going to bring the drama into the house and leave probably brokenhearted. Listen to Bachelor Happy Hour on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello. From Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're talking about adventurers, women who refuse to be confined. They pushed the boundaries of where a woman could go and how she could get there. In her long wool skirts and prim buttoned collars, today's womanikin may not have looked the part of an adventurer, but she became one of the first women professional mountaineers. Let's talk about Fanny Bullock Workman. Fanny Bullock was born in 1859 into privilege. Her parents were wealthy New Englanders, and she was educated as a girl of her status often was, first with a governess and later at Miss Graham's finishing school in New York. The finishing school served its purpose. Fanny married William Hunter Workman when she was 22 years old. William was also wealthy and a doctor. Armed with two inheritances, the pair began spending their free time doing something a bit unusual. Mountain climbing. They often trekked through New Hampshire, where Fanny summited the treacherous Mount Washington several times. American hiking clubs had started encouraging women to climb and explore, unlike their peers in Europe, who usually kept the activity men only. Fanny and William had two children, Rachel, born in 1884, and Siegfried, born in 1889. The year Siegfried was born, William retired from medicine, and the family moved to Germany. There, Fanny and William took on a new activity, bicycling. Like hiking, bicycling was newly welcoming to women. The bike's shape had changed from the giant front wheel penny farthing model to the design we're familiar with today, two equal tires and a diamond-shaped body. Women could ride these bikes easily, even with their long skirts. Over the next few years, Fanny and William biked through Europe. They kept climbing mountains, too, Fanny became one of the first women to summit several peaks in the Alps, including the Matterhorn and Mont Blanc. In 1893, tragedy struck. Fanny and William's son, Siegfried, died from a respiratory illness. He was just a few years old. But Siegfried's death didn't dampen Fanny's adventurous spirit. If anything, she was inspired to go farther, to see more, to push herself physically and mentally but that also meant leaving her surviving child, Rachel, behind. Rachel was raised by nannies and nurses and governesses, and later sent to boarding school. When Rachel married in 1911, Fanny wasn't there. She was in the Himalayas climbing mountains. In 1893, Fanny and William packed up their bikes and set out for Spain and Algeria. They visited mosques in Tlemcen, were chased by wild dogs in Algiers, and hopped from oasis to oasis across the Sahara Desert. At least, that's what they wrote in Algerian Memories, the first of many books about their travels. In 1897, Fanny and William set out on their bikes again, this time for a -a two-and-a-half-year tour through India and Java. They packed lightly, bringing the bare minimum, but Fanny made sure to carry a whip and a revolver to defend herself from whatever was coming her way. The trip was rough. Fanny was in her late 30s, while William reached 50 while they were on the road. They ran out of food and water, battled rats and mosquitoes and punctured tires. 
and they logged more than 14,000 miles. They kept writing about their travels, too. Fanny often included photos she took with her camera and wrote about women's lives and their rights as she observed them. To escape the summer heat, Fanny and William ventured into the mountains. There, they discovered their next big adventure, climbing in the Himalayas. They would return to the Himalayas time and time again. As a climber, Fanny was slow and deliberate, but it turns out her pace was her secret weapon. It allowed her to comfortably acclimate to changes in air pressure and oxygen levels. So Fanny, wearing wool skirts and blouses and lace-up boots with nails drilled into the soles for traction, trekked thousands of feet into the air, setting several altitude records for women. In 1906, she and William became some of the first people to summit more than 22,000 feet up to Pinnacle Peak. Fanny was 47 years old. After 1912, Fanny and William slowed down, in large part because of the beginnings of World War I. They traveled instead as lecturers. Eventually, Fanny became one of the first women to be elected into the Royal Geographical Society, as well as a number of European adventuring societies. Fanny died in 1925 in Cannes, France. She left money to four predominantly women's colleges, Radcliffe, Smith, Wellesley, and Bryn Mawr. Today, her scholarships still exist, helping women travel around the world just like she did. All month, we're talking about adventurers. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay, before we go, does anyone need to use the bathroom? Nope. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. You're sure you're sure? Yep. There are some things in life you can't trust. Uh, mommy? Oh, come on. And there are some things you can, like the HP Smart Tank printer. With up to two years of ink included and outstanding print quality, you can always rely on the HP Smart Tank. From HP, America's most trusted printer brand. See hp.com slash smart tank for more information. Deep in the mountains of Greece, the country's most wanted man has been on the run for over a decade. He's a bank robber. We hear a barrage of shots. A kidnapper. But to many Greeks, he's a hero. His name is Vasilis Paliokostas, and we're on the trail of the man behind the myth. A modern-day Robin Hood who steals from the rich and gives to the poor. I'm Miles Gray. Listen to The Good Thief on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Bachelor Happy Hour, the one and only official Bachelor Nation podcast, is back. Go behind the scenes with your hosts, Bachelor in Paradise Season 7 newlyweds, Joe Amabile and Serena Pitt, for real stories about what happens in Bachelor Mansion. Here on Bachelor Happy Hour, we'll be putting all the guys in the hot seat. We'll have exclusive interviews. We'll be the first to talk to the men. We're going to bring the drama into the house and leave probably brokenhearted. Listen to Bachelor Happy Hour on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.